Alrighty guys, so it's a little hot today, but today we're gonna be making the best round bale feeder. We've used this for our donkeys, we've used it for our horses, and it's worked wonderfully for both. And for today's purpose, we're actually gonna be making this for one cow, a rescue cow, Norris, eight boy goats, and then two male alpacas that we all have in this pen together. What you're gonna need is 14 two by six by sixes. Unfortunately, our local lumber store did not have any six foot two by sixes. So we're using two by six by eight, and we're just gonna cut two feet off of all the boards. And then same thing with the four by four posts. We're gonna use four four by four posts. And we're gonna cut those to six feet long. So if you have a six foot one, that's great. We didn't, so today we're using an eight foot one and just cutting two feet off of it. And one thing I do wanna know before we get too far into this, um, this is gonna be part one of the structure. So we're gonna make the wooden frame. And then one other thing you're gonna need is a hay net. So you can order that off of Amazon. I'll link it down below. It's a product that we've used a lot and has worked wonderfully. It's a little pricey, but the amount that you'll save in terms of wasted hay is pretty significant. And it's literally maybe three handfuls of hay left over whenever they're finished with the round bell. But yeah, let's get into it. You ever have that feeling when you just cut like half a dozen boards and you're like, hmm, I really hope I made those measurements right. Alrighty, so we have all the main boards for the actual frame cut that we're gonna use. They're all cut to six feet, so that's 12 boards to six feet long. These two boards we're gonna save till the end for the rafters. Next, we have to cut these four by fours to six feet long. And let me tell you, if you can get a six foot four by four, just do that. It's so much easier than trying to cut these things. <laughs> Now that we have everything cut to size, we can go ahead and start putting it all together. We're gonna to start with four of the two by sixes. Alrighty, so starting out, I'm only gonna put one screw in each of these boards. That way, when I inevitably mess up, I only have one screw to take out instead of like three or four or five or however many else I put in there. But we're just making a simple square shape. I'm just butting the boards up against each other. So now that we have the square secured, we can go ahead and move on to putting the four by four posts on each corner. So all four posts are up. I'm not worried too much about making sure they're level because we'll do that with the next set of two by sixes that we put up. So for this next set of two by sixes, I want the space between the top of this board and the bottom of this next board to be about 18 inches. So I'm just gonna take my tape measure and go from the top of this board all the way up and make a little mark with my Sharpie marking 18 inches. Also, you'll thank yourself later if you go ahead and start drilling in these screws prior to actually putting the board up. Especially if you're only doing it like one person, like me, because Jason went to go work on a side quest while I'm stuck doing this. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the side that's flush with the four x four. Your two boards on this side and this side are gonna be flush with the four x four, and then your board in the front and the back are gonna overlap by about an inch and a half or however much the width of this board right here is. So we're gonna start with this side. And I have the bottom of that board lined up with my Sharpie marks up underneath, so I know that the space in between is 18 inches, exactly. So you can start to see the feeder taking shape. Next up, all we're gonna do is mirror what we did right here up on the top level of the feeder. We're just gonna make sure the two by sixes are flush with the top of these four by fours. Did not screw that in all the way. Guys, get, get someone else to help you. It's so much easier when you have two people. It's way too hot to be doing this solo. <laughs> that was the most intense like lat workout. Is that what this is? I think it's the lat, yeah. It's a workout.
take 573. So moral of this story, make sure you use longer screws. I only have two inch screws on me. You really need the three inch ones for this because you're going through two inch board. So yeah, don't be like me. Make sure you buy screws in advance. Um, so I'm gonna go see if I can find some three inch screws. Found some. All right, this'll, this'll be it. I can feel it, I can feel it. I already know this is not my most flattering angle, but you know what? Long screws for the win. All right, last one. Finally done with this side. Should not have taken that long. And now for the final board to complete the frame. I think what I need is like one of those belt clips for these drills so I can just like throw it right here instead of like attempting to hold it with my chin because that just doesn't cut it all the time. Alrighty, so that completes the frame. So these two raptor boards, number 13 and 14, are also going to be cut to six feet. And those will just mirror the boards that we have going this way that are sandwiched in between the two outer boards. And that's what'll support our roof. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Use long screws, guys. Alrighty, so I have my final two six foot boards and these ones are just going to go in between right here so y'all can kind of see what I was talking about earlier. We're just going to space them evenly. So our total length right here is 61 and a half inches. So I'm just going to divide that by three and that'll be the space that we need in between each of these sections. 61 and a half divided by three is 20 and a half inches. So I'm just going to make the space right here 20 inches space right here, 20 inches, and the space in between should be around 20 inches. It doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to support the roof. And the reason I said 20 inches and not 20 and a half is because each of these boards is about an inch and a half thick, so that should make up the difference. So I just got these screws started 20 inches in from the end of the 4x4 right here. That way when I put the board up, because once again, I'm doing this solo, it'll be easier to screw it in all the way. And I'm doing the same thing on this back side. So now I'm gonna attempt to do the difficult act of holding a board up while screwing from the outside. Hopefully I can do it, we shall see. So that worked out perfectly because I was able to like prop the board up right here so the board actually held itself up. Now I definitely just jinxed it and the next one is not gonna be that easy, but fingers crossed, maybe it will. Oh. Okay, so we got it up with excessive amounts of effort, but it's up and that's all that matters. And I already know someone is gonna be in the comments talking about like, oh, all you had to do was cut a board to this length and it would've worked. And you're right, you're right. But you know what? Figure it out. That's that's what we're doing. And um, yeah, so if you have an easier way, you're definitely right. Let me know in the comments. But for today's purposes, it worked. We got these center rafters up and they are, let's see how off I was with my math. So that's 20 inches right there. That's 19 and a quarter and 19 and a quarter. So yeah, I was a tiny bit off, but it was close enough and that's all that really matters. And the most important thing is that it supports the tin and the tin's actually gonna be going in the opposite direction of the boards. So it's not too critical how far apart those are spaced. But 20 inches is like a good rough estimate. So before we put the tin on and I crawl up on top of this roof to put it up there, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more securing screws in there. I found some more long screws, so I'll throw those in. That way it's nice and sturdy before I try to climb this thing. Cause I trust my work, but I don't trust it that much. So the solution is putting in like 45 million screws and then you'll be all set. Does anyone else have an issue with the DeWalt batteries just like dying for no reason? Like these are, okay, this is actually an old battery, but even our new batteries die like super quickly.
Now one thing I want to note is the middle board on this side actually only left one screw in, and that's because whenever we go to put the round bell in, I'm going to pop those screws out um, so the entire board comes off and we can easily put the round bell in and out. Or you can also put a hinge on and that works too. Apologies for the tractor noise. So this is where it starts to get a little sketch. And the only reason for that is because I may or may not have had enough long screws to really secure these top rafters right here. And we all saw what happened earlier when I didn't use the long screws. But I think I may do, and I mean, that's like relatively secure. So we should be good. If your muscles fail, just use your head. Life advice from Jonas. All right, so this tin that we're using right here is just over three feet wide, so obviously it's a six foot enclosure, so really we should only need two. My preferred way of doing this is laying all the tin up there, placing it exactly how you want it, and then screwing everything in. Otherwise, you might start screwing the first piece of tin in and then realize you don't like the angle or something like that. This is all wrong. Oh, really? Yeah, it needs to be a half an inch this way more. Half an inch this Tear way. it apart. All right, so I got everything lined up how I want it. I have one foot of overlap on the front, one foot of overlap on the back, so it's perfectly even. And now I can go ahead and start screwing everything in. Nobody likes you. Get to work. Stop playing with the camera. Not safe at all. But we, we got to work with what we got, right? And what I don't got is a ladder. So this has gotten the job done. Alrighty, we're good. Please, dear God, let me have built this right. We're good. So we got plenty of screws securing the roof. No rain is getting in here. We are all set. By far the hardest part of this build is trying to make sure you're hitting the studs. Once again, so much easier if you have someone up underneath. And if you can get that first screw right, then you can line all of your other screws up along with it. But with me, I just use the longer roofing screws. That way, if I go in and I miss the stud, I still have a lot of wiggle room to try and hit the board. But gets the job done and we're all set. We're gonna burn it and then we'll be done. I'm really hoping this video it makes that fall look a lot more dramatic than it really was. So the roof is the hardest part of the build. This is the most fun and the easiest part of it. So it's starting to rain pretty good and I'm running out of propane. So we're just gonna call it at that. It's enough to kind of uh, finish the look for the time being. And I'll go back and finish burning it later on. But for today, that finishes the project. We're gonna go to move it inside the goats and North and the male alpacas pin and uh, get it set up for them before it starts raining too hard. So this right here is our old hay feeder and you can see just how much waste there was. Alrighty, so this right here is our hay net. Ignore the dirt right there, we'll clean that up later. We have our round belt right here, so we're gonna go ahead and cut the net off. Actually, before we do this, we're gonna go ahead and undo this round belt net up underneath the hay. That way it catches all the loose stuff that, uh, that falls down. Alrighty, so we got the net all spread out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it real quick. Very important, make sure you take the plastic off. 
All right, so this is totally disconnected. I'm gonna go and take this net all the way off. Now we'll take this and oh, attempt to throw it over top. Let's see, take two. All right, so we got this side up. Just gotta come around and do the other side. And we're using the tractor for this, but I have also seen people just lay it flat on the ground and roll it on there. And uh, from what I've seen, that works pretty well too. And then we're gonna find this knot right here and you just pull that knot and that gets all the slack out of the round bale. The goal is just to make this hole as small as possible, but it's not the end of the world if there is a little bit of a gap right there. And then what I like to do is weave it through here and here, and then just do a quick release knot. That way it's easier whenever you go to undo it. Just making this super tight. And we're gonna stuff it inside here, that way none of the animals can get it. But the round bale is totally on there now, and we have this nice hay net that will hopefully prevent um, a lot of spillage with the cow and all the goats. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take this inside their pen. So yeah, this right here is all the waste left over from the last round bale that we had. It was just one of those metal round bale holders. Um, and I mean, you can see that's a lot of waste, probably at least a fourth of the round bale spread all over the ground and it's nothing but poop and pee up inside there. It's so really nasty. So we're hopeful that this uh, hay net will work for the cow and for the goats. It's worked really well for our horses and for our donkeys, but we shall see. This is another area that we had a ton of old hay at left over from the round bell feeder that we just cleaned. But if you were doing this solo, you would unscrew that and then you can pop the board off totally. Um, since we have the tractor, we can actually just set the round bell down and set the feeder up on top of it without having to do anything. That's one way to do it. <laughs> Guys, this is definitely the most complicated way of doing it. If, uh, if you just get a hinge for that front board, it's a lot easier, or you can literally just pop the screw off. For some, whatever reason, we're doing it the more difficult way, um, but really just anything to please Jason, I guess. Okay, he's, he's trying to push it up in here. I feel like he might kill me in the act. Oh my God, oh my God, okay, okay, we're doing this. All right, okay, that's enough. That's enough slices, we're good now. Oh my God, okay, all right, okie dokie. Okay, okay guys, this thing is not light at all. Oh God, okay, yeah, easy peasy. Oh my God, that was so much easier. And like I mentioned earlier guys, it's still a little wobbly. We ran out of long screws, but I'm gonna go back in and secure all this um, and make it nice and secure. But overall it'll hold up for the next day or two until we run back out to, uh, to get some more screws. Alrighty, so all of these guys are making wonderful use of the hay net. Walnut here is chowing down. Norse seems to be using it. It's gonna make him eat smaller amounts at a time, which is totally fine, because all this guy was doing was taking massive chunks of hay out of the old hay feeder and then dropping half it on the ground. So this will just make him savor what he's eating a little bit more. And this guy is by no means uh, underweight at all. All these guys, Nigerian dwarfs, using it wonderfully. So yeah, between this covered area and the hay net, it makes for a wonderful hay setup. It's definitely the least waste we have ever experienced with round bales. Um, so even though it's a little bit of an investment in terms of all the lumber, the tin, and the hay net, over the course of several months, you're gonna make your money back with uh, how much you're saving without wasting all that hay. But 
these guys are definitely loving it. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching the video. We hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment down below and let us know what success you've had with different hay feeders, hay nets, etc. Like the video if you enjoyed it and give us a follow if you want some more animal content. Unfortunately, I let a mean pony loose earlier, so I gotta go catch him real quick. But we will go to you later.